This is a great question and there is a surprisingly logical answer, but the secret is there are already 6,100 rear shocks for new Tundras and Sequoias and well, they're gonna be available for just about every other application too. But let's talk about why they only meant these 6112s to be paired with the 5160s. See, shocks are a hydraulic system. So the greater the surface area of the piston and the greater the oil volume, the more damping force potential they have without having to be tuned quite as stiff as a smaller bodied shock. The majority of these systems are designed for vehicles with independent suspension in the front and a solid axle in the back, which is a big contributing factor to why Bill Stein set these packages up as such. Not only are the front of vehicles generally heavier than the rear, but independent front suspension generally has what's called a greater motion ratio. We won't delve too deep into it, but motion ratio is basically the ratio between wheel travel and shock travel. The greater the motion ratio, the more wheel travel you get for a set amount of shock travel, but the damper is less efficient by pretty much that same factor. Most independent front suspension systems have close to, if not have, a two to one motion ratio, which means for every two inches of wheel travel, that strut is only moving one inch. By comparison, your solid axle rear suspension probably has close to, if not exactly, a one to one motion ratio. This means your front struts or shocks are working twice as hard as the rears. Now, remember when we said shocks are a hydraulic system and the greater the piston size, the greater the damping force potential? Well, the 60 millimeter piston on the 6112 has two times the damping force potential of the 46 millimeter piston on the 5100s or 5160s. So functionally, although the rear shocks are significantly smaller, the motion ratio differences mean they have the capacity for the same level of performance. Now to ensure both front and rear shocks fade at a similar rate or dissipate heat at a similar rate, Bill Stein recommends to use the 5160s, which have external reservoirs and cool much better than the 5100s. Now that definitely holds true on paper, at least when you're not going absolutely mock G this off-road, but we have found that two-inch body shocks like the 5100s or 5160s do end up being the limitation when you are hitting those big bumps and you might be carrying some speed. We recently tested Icon's 2.5 EXP kit on Jeff's Tundra, and that uses a two and a half inch body front, 2.0 rear, and the front felt great, the rear felt a little lackluster. We then switched over to the Dolstein 6112s and those new 6100s I was talking about previously, and the truck did things that, well, we didn't think would be possible, and it was even more comfortable out back. Bill Stein knows full well they cooked with those 6100 rear shocks, so we're predicting they're going to be available for most, if not all, popular applications that can fit them, and well, 5160 might just be dead.